How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome to the channel. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to fix a laggy live streams. Now there are many different options out there that you can go ahead and try, but I'm going to be giving you five different points. So make sure you go ahead and take a look at the timestamp in the video description below. That way you can jump to whatever point of the video is more suited for the information that you're looking for. All right, so let's talk about bitrate. Now, bitrate can go into a lot of detailed advanced talk, which I am not going to go into in this video, but I will say this. With bitrate, it is essentially your internet upload speed that you are using to be able to upload your stream to whatever server you are trying to stream to, whether it's a Twitch server, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. You are taking part of your upload speed of your internet to be able to carry your stream to that server. So if you have... A lot of people using your internet at the time you're trying to stream, it's going to cause drop frames and it's also going to cause the stream to lag. The other thing too is if you are not in a, like if you're not a partner or if you don't have any way of getting transcoding and you're pushing a 6,000 kilobytes per second or kbps, whatever, that's essentially six upload um, of your 10. So it's also going to cause problems if other people are using the internet. Here are a few tips that you can actually use. If you're using Wi-Fi, get off Wi-Fi for your streams because it's inconsistent for however your speed is. Go with a wired connection. There are many different possibilities as to how you can do that, so definitely Google that. Uh, but you're definitely going to want to go with a wired connection. As I've already mentioned, a minimum of having a 10 upload speed. If you can get higher speeds than that, you will be golden. But 10 would be the very bare minimum. The other thing is to find a router that has QoS, quality of service. What this allows you to do is go into the actual settings of the QoS and set up what devices are going to have more priority of your internet. That way your streaming rig and everything like that will have more of a priority of taking the internet compared to someone's cell phone or someone's streaming box or anything like that. So. That is something that you can also utilize whenever it comes to trying to get a better overall signal for your stream and everything like that when it comes to the speeds. But one other thing about bitrate too is you have to understand the type of resolution that you're trying to stream. So if you're doing 1080p, but you're trying to do 60 frames per second, it's going to cost more of your actual speed compared to someone who's trying to do 720p at 30 fps and they wouldn't have to use as much of the internet for something like that the other thing too like i mentioned if you're not a twitch partner and even if you're a twitch affiliate but you don't get transcoding and you're sitting at 1080p have a high like internet speed that you're trying to use if someone who's trying to watch doesn't have that internet speed available for them or if they're trying to watch on Wi-Fi or they're trying to watch as they're out and about and they're not able to get a good Wi-Fi signal and their data is not strong enough, they're also not going to be able to watch or change the actual resolution of it. So that's something else that you want to keep in mind whenever it comes to bitrate. So when you're also setting up your actual bitrate and everything like that, if you're not an affiliate, I would just leave it at 3,500 at the very max. And if you're over on YouTube and you have transcoding and everything like that, you can set it up as high as you want because everybody will then be able to change the resolution down. I'm not familiar with some of the other streaming platforms, but just kind of mess with it and see if you're able to adjust any type of transcoding and then see if it causes any problems. But if it does, then you're going to want to lower down the bit rate and see if it will make things a little bit easier for you. But one thing about lowering the bit rate too far down is it will also make your stream very pixelated because higher bit rate can also give you better quality for your stream. So it's kind of like a balancing act. You got to figure out, you know, how it's all going to work. But some of these things that I mentioned will definitely help. I'll throw some resources about bit rate inside the video description below for you. Let's move on to the next one. The next area we're going to talk about is the actual stream server. So when you are either in Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, you're just going to go into your settings and we're going to go up here to stream. And this is where you're going to be able to see like where is going to be the best place for you to go. So whenever you're setting up your service, you can choose from any of these different services and whatnot. And you can either leave it under recommended, which will 
pretty much set up an auto server for for whatever is closest to you or whatever they feel is going to be the best. Maybe one that's not super congested, but it might still be kind of further away from you. Or you can select whatever city is closest to you based on your location. Now, either one of these will be fine. But if you are noticing that you're having a lot of drop frames with the auto for recommended, try just selecting the server yourself and see if anything improves. So the next area is turning off background apps. This is very important, especially if your CPU and your RAM are really getting sky high and you're also streaming pretty heavily. So what you're going to want to do is go down to the search and we're going to type in MS config. That's going to bring us into our system configurations. We're going to go to services. Make sure you click on hide all Microsoft services. This one right here. Once you have that hidden, go ahead and go to disable all, click apply, then click OK, reboot your machine, and then try it again and see if it improved anything. If not, let's try the next one. The next one, we're going to go to our actual task manager. So we're going to right click on the start, go to task manager. Here's where you're going to be able to see all your current apps that are open. And then you have a bunch of background apps or background processes or whatever. Now, aside from that, you also are going to have down here is your Windows processes. Do not go in here. Don't touch anything in here. Just go through your background apps or background processes and there's anything that you don't need to be running, then you can just go ahead and cancel them. But you wanna just close out any programs or anything that you're just not needing. That way you can bring this stuff down. Once you have that done, go to the startup tab. Here in the startup tab, this is everything that your machine has to start up as soon as it goes through its boot. So as soon as everything comes up and you log in, these are all the applications that are going to be needing to run as soon as everything starts. So if you don't need anything, just go and disable all this stuff here. Anything that you're going to need later on, you can just go and reopen that program and then it will go and enable itself again, even if it's on this list. But if you don't need it, as soon as the machine boots up, go ahead and just disable all of this stuff on here and then reboot your machine and see if that helps. If not, then we're going to go on to the next one. So we're going to go back to the search. We're going to type in performance and we're going to look for the adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. So when you're on here, you're going to see something like this and you have a bunch of different options. You have the ability of letting Windows choose what's best for the computer. You can have it adjust for best appearance or best performance, or you can set custom. Again, once you're done making that change, restart your computer and see if it does anything. Now, if you are gone through all of those, there is another thing you can do, and that's to run your encoder as an actual administrator. So for Streamlabs, what we're going to do is we're going to type in Streamlabs and we're going to go to open, open file, and then right click, go over to properties, go over to compatibility, and make sure you have run this program as an administrator selected. Once that's done, go ahead and apply, click OK. And then you're going to launch the program. I already have it launched because I'm using it as a screen recorder. But once you have it launched, you're going to then right click on it. Make sure you have it pinned to the taskbar like I have here. And then every time you go and launch the program, it's going to launch it as administrator. You may have to restart your computer for this part as well. Uh, but every other time you boot it up, it will run it as administrator. And one other thing you can do as well is if you want to disable the actual preview on Streamlabs OBS, just right click on the preview and that way you can disable it. It's going to be one of the options in the list. But that will help you guys out with, you know, keeping your resources low and turning off anything that you don't need to help you with having any type of frame issues or having any type of lag or anything like that when it comes to the stream. So try those out. Let me know if they work. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. All right, so let's talk about stream settings. This is more often not where you're going to find a lot of your problems. And bitrate was already one of the things that I mentioned, so that kind of falls suit into stream settings as well. But let's go ahead and actually open up the stream settings here. So one of the things you're going to want to make sure you have turned off is actually having it where it's automatically recording when streaming. If you're already having an issue with your stream, 
there's no reason why you should be trying to actually record it while you're also trying to stream. If your computer is not able to handle that, don't have this checked. So the next thing we're going to actually want to talk about is the canvas size. So I stream in 720p at 60 frames per second. I feel like that's a good sweet spot for a lot of people who are trying to watch. And it also doesn't do a lot of overworking on my computer. Now, my computer, by all means, is not a weak computer, but I also don't want to overstress my computer just for 1080p. So whatever you have your base canvas at, if you have it at 1920 by 1080, then you want to downscale it to 720p. And if you do downscale, then you're going to want to choose one of these options here for whatever type of downscaling you want to go with. Whenever it comes to the actual FPS that you're trying to stream, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you're not an affiliate and if you don't have transcoding, don't try doing 60 frames per second. Just set it to 30. Even if it's 720p, 30 FPS, that's fine. 1080p, 30 FPS, that's fine. You want to make sure that people are going to be able to watch what it is you're trying to stream. Next is your actual output. So in output, you have either under simple or advanced. So on this tab, I'm on the advanced tab. You have different options. You can either use the NVIDIA card if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, or you can use your actual processor. So there's going to be different presets for different things depending on what it is that you're trying to achieve. Now, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card and you're only streaming on a single PC, I recommend you using your NVIDIA graphics card as your encoding. It's got a built-in chip just for that and it will do a lot less stress on your computer if you're doing it that way. If you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card that does support being able to stream off of it, then you're gonna wanna use your actual processor, which is gonna be the X264. Now. This is where bitrate comes into play. With bitrate, I, I have it set for 3500 because I don't want to overwork everything. I want to make sure people can watch it. Quality is still very good, and I haven't had any issues with it. No frame drops, no nothing. So this gives me enough wiggle room whenever I'm streaming and so on and so forth, like I've mentioned already with bitrate at the beginning of the video. So this is important. And... You know, choosing the correct type of preset, whether you are using any of these presets for the NVIDIA graphics card or you're using the other types of presets that come with using X264. If you're wanting to figure out what's the best settings, there's plenty of videos on that and we can always talk about it inside of the comment section as well. But there's plenty of videos on YouTube that already go over that. So I definitely recommend you guys checking those out. The other thing that we want to talk about is the process priority. So I believe that's in advance. Yes. So in process priority, this is letting you know to your computer that you want this encoder to be processed different with your actual processor and everything like that. So if you have it above normal, that means it's going to get more of a priority compared to some of your other programs. So again, you can try this and see if it gives you any problems or not, but that's, an, that's something you can definitely try. Also, if you have any type of animated overlays, you just want to turn those off. Like that's going to also use more CPU. It's going to use more of your RAM. So you just want to just get rid of animated overlays if you're having any problems. If you have any of your overlays in like your scene collections and stuff like that, like if you're on Streamlabs OBS, uh, then you're going to want to get rid of those scenes that you're not using. You're going to want to get rid of the scene collections that have just all this extra stuff that came with it when you installed it that you just are not using. So get rid of those things. Same thing with sources that you aren't using so that way they don't run in the background. And like I mentioned before in the turning off background stuff, you can also just disable the actual preview. That way you're getting rid of the... Uh, you're getting rid of that extra stuff that has to be used. All right, so this is the last bit of the video and it's probably the most important. Your actual PC itself, if it's not able to handle streaming, everything that I've talked about so far is gonna pretty much fall flat. You need to have a good PC in order to be able to stream and you don't have to go spend thousands and thousands of dollars to be able to do it. You can spend roughly around 500 to to $1,000 to be able to have a decent rig to be able to start your streams. 
So for me, there's some bare minimums that I look at when I'm looking for a very cheap rig to start with. When it comes to your processor, you want to make sure it's at least a quad core processor. So four cores in your processor with a speed of 2.5 gigahertz. Now, if you can get it higher, if you can overclock it, go for it. There's a ton of videos out there that talk about overclocking. When it comes to your graphics card, having either the NVIDIA 1000 series, 2000 series, or 3000 series, if you're lucky to find any of them at a decent price, those are good to have. I use a 1070 inside of mine. I've used it for a few years now, and I've had no problems with it. I can stream games at pretty high resolutions and high FPS while still playing them and everything and having no problems whatsoever. The other thing too is your RAM. When it comes to your RAM, you want to have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's going to be plenty to start with, but I definitely recommend eventually upgrading to at least 32 because a lot of games are requiring a high amount of RAM and it's going to also benefit the speed of your computer. Now, the other thing too is if you are trying to play a PC game at 1440p and you're also trying to stream it at say like 1080p, 60 FPS and stuff like that, and you're noticing a lot of frame drops, you're noticing a lot of issues in your game and everything like that, it's because you're overworking the computer. So the second option, and it's a very expensive option, it's to do a dual PC setup. Now, there's a lot that goes into that. I don't do dual PCs. I have no idea about like what goes into all that. There's plenty of videos on there, so browse YouTube for it. I hear it does great wonders if you guys want to invest into that. But just starting out with streaming, you don't really need to invest into that. But if you're a seasoned streamer or you're wanting to kind of venture into that, that's definitely a way to go. Because what happens is one PC is where all the streaming stuff takes place and nothing else is going on. So it's able to do everything and not overwork itself when you're playing like a PC game or something like that. So it's it's nice to be able to do that. It's something that I personally want to eventually do myself. But that's if something that you guys want to look into. It's another option. But anyways, guys, that is pretty much everything. I know this video was a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but I did mention it about being pretty long in the very beginning of the video. So if you ever need to rewatch anything, just jump into the timestamps. That way you can see everything that I've talked about again and again. But if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me in the comments and Discord when I'm streaming on Twitter. And if this is your first time here, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content on the channel as I do cover a lot of technical stuff when it comes to streaming. And if you find that stuff helpful, be sure to subscribe, click the bell icon, and that way you can get notified every time I upload a video. But I will see you all in the next video or whenever I stream. And thank you again so much for watching and take care.